Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about nothing else but diet. Today we're gonna to run through basically Mike and Mia's full daily routine on what they eat from start to end. We're also gonna have a great chat in detail about why we have cut our palate. Yep, completely gone. Now, a few months ago, we actually had a chat with Dr. Jason Crean right before we moved out of the old place, and it was amazing. It opened our eyes to so many things. We're actually gonna be posting the conversation, answering your questions about diet, and he gets really, really in some crazy, crazy detail. Honestly, this is gonna blow your mind. It was like a two hour conversation, which we are actually cutting right down to maybe like an hour or something like that. Uh, which is going to be amazing for anyone out there who does really want to geek out over diet because we've been going nuts. All I've been doing recently is watching conversations from Dr. Jason Kring, Dr. Karen Becker, reading and studying about diet. So I know for sure I'm doing my absolute best so these guys are happy. And after what we have been posting all over our Instagram, there is so many of you guys out there who actually want to do the same. So well done and I hope this video does help. But for now, let's start with our day. So, on an average day, we try and wake up at eight o'clock because the very first thing we have to do every single morning is make their chop. And when it comes to chop, a lot of people actually make it in bulk and freeze it. We prefer to feed it fresh every morning. It's kind of like what we'd prefer if we were getting fed, I guess. Now, nearly half of our fridge is literally just filled with produce. Diversity is so important when it does come to these birds. They should never be getting too much of one thing, too little of one thing. They should be getting a huge variety of all the things they need. Now with our morning chop, we cut maybe around 10 to 15 different vegetables and add in maybe two to three fruit. We always keep our veg to fruit ratio slightly higher. Now, as you can see, there's quite a few ingredients here, but only the very smallest amount of each. The one thing we see a lot, and we did this too back in the day, is basically fill a bird's bowl or half fill a bird's bowl. It's absolutely insane. Do you know how big a bird's crop is? Like, where are they even gonna put that stuff? The best thing you can really focus on is portion size. Because if you keep filling those bowls up and overfeeding, honestly, half of that food is gonna end up on the floor and then they're just gonna be very picky with the rest of it and not get that full variety and diversity inside them. So now we make enough to fill their crops with a huge diversity, but not so much that they can just kind of pick and choose what they want and throw the rest. Now everything here is actually completely raw apart from the sweet potato, beetroot and squash, which we lightly steam at the start of the week. And we cut it all up in our manual food processor. And for our guys, we do three tablespoons each of the chop and one tablespoon of sprouts. Now we absolutely love giving our guys sprouts. They're so nutritious, filled with protein. The blend we currently have has mung beans, lentils, wheat berry, brown rice, buckwheat, all human grade of course. Now I'm actually gonna touch on human grade versus feed grade very, very soon, so keep watching. We soak them overnight. After maybe 24 to 36 hours, they start growing these tiny little tails and they are ready to be eaten. And the birds absolutely love them. And we never leave their chop in their cage all day long. They eat out here with us every single morning. They know they've got a good hour and a bit to do so, so they chop down pretty fast. So in this chop alone, even though it is a small amount, which is gonna fill them up, there's a good 20 plus ingredients that their bodies are absolutely going to love. Now after breakfast, we would usually either go for a fly or we might have to start work. Myself and Mummy Human both work from home. We alternate hours, we work part time. It's pretty chill. And this is when they are gonna get their nuts. Now a lot of people actually reserve nuts for training. They use them as positive reinforcement when they're working with their bird. Others do include them in a normal diet. Both work perfectly fine. It's up to you and your bird. If you are using them in a normal diet, if you do soak them, it is gonna unlock a whole lot more nutrition than feeding them dry but it is up to you. Now, all birds need nuts. The nutrition in nuts is absolutely insane. My Kim here get about a small handful worth of nuts every single day. Now that can either be when we're flying and training, every big wings, every hello, every recall, every landing, they are getting a tiny bit of either an almond, a cashew, a walnut, a hazelnut, a pecan. We stay away from peanuts though, Jason's actually gonna touch on that in the next video. Now, if we're not flying, that doesn't mean they're not getting their nuts. 
There, Avery is set up with many, many foraging toys and activities, so we'll always, always make it a real challenge for them to actually get their nuts, because that's what they love to do. That's how they're wired. They love to work for food, so we'll put them in foraging toys, we'll wrap them up in loads of paper, and put them in cages, and that way they're keeping their brain stimulated. They're having to think, they're having fun. Now with nuts, don't go away thinking, great, I'm gonna give my bird handfuls of nuts. Obviously it depends on the size of your bird, the species of your bird. A budgie clearly doesn't need as many nuts as a macaw, so common sense does come into a factor here, but they need to be a part of your bird's diet. Again, everything needs to be a part of your bird's diet, and some people tend to stay away from nuts because they think they're too fatty, but in small doses they are amazing. They're filled with omega-3, vitamin E, selenium, magnesium, honestly, so much goodness. Our guys get at least a walnut a day, usually one or two a day, every single day, and they absolutely love it. They love it because they know their body needs it. That's why sometimes birds go nuts for their nuts, because they know their body actually desperately needs them. Now let's chat about dinner, what you have all been waiting for. Yes, we have completely dropped pallets. Now, as I mentioned earlier, everything I have come to learn over the last few months, I've got from chatting to Dr. Jason Crean, watching his chats with Dr. Karen Becker, who is absolutely amazing. I'm gonna link both the videos I watched in the description as well. And following Dr. Jason Crean's Facebook page, Avian Raw Whole Food Nutrition, it is absolutely phenomenal for recipes, for sprouting times, for just any kind of advice on how to feed your bird raw whole food. But we used to feed pellets. And in the back of my mind, I always thought, do these tiny little cubes actually provide birds with what they need to eat every single day for 60 to 80 years? To be honest, it never really made sense to me. Now, pellets are highly processed food. All of you out there, you eat food. You know the difference between whole food and processed food. You know processed food isn't good for you, but you eat it anyway. I mean, I've left off processed food and takeaways the majority of my life. I know it's not good for me. Now, let's start with what is in the pellets. Now, the ingredients in most pellet brands, I'm gonna say nearly all pellet brands are feed grade, not food grade. Now, food grade is what is safe for human consumption. Now, in most pellets, they are filling them with feed grade meals and feed grade ingredients, which would never, ever pass tests for human consumption. Karen Becker actually said 99% of mass-produced bird foods on the market are made with non-inspected feed grade ingredients. So the levels of heavy metals, mycotoxins, pesticide residue, and contaminants can be profound. Now what I've come to learn is that what we were actually feeding before was actually made up of cheap feed grade meal, like soy and peanuts. Both are bad. I mean, soy alone messes with humans' hormones. Imagine what it does to birds. Now most are actually packed with artificial colors, food additives, synthetic vitamins, and sugar. Like they say the word sugar on the packet. The brand we used to use also said on their website, if you want to feed additional items apart from their pellets, it should never make up more than 10%. Like, that is ridiculous. Now they also add synthetic vitamins and minerals and stuff as well. Again, it is all feed grade, not food grade. So go have a look at your packet. If you see words like oxide and sulfate, like zinc oxide and stuff like that, it's just a cheap feed grade nutrient which really should be avoided. Now it's not just about the ingredients that go into these things, but it's how they are made. Most pellet companies, not all, but I'd say maybe nine out of 10, will heat press their pellets, which means they heat up all this stuff so much, which burns out anything good which they originally put in it, and then they dry it out even more to give it a shelf life, which basically means you've lost all the nutrients that the packet said was in them. I mean, they're not lying. They may have put a bunch of really good food and vitamins in to begin with, but they definitely did not survive that heating process. Also, here's something quite funny Dr. Karen Becker actually brought up. Have you ever looked at the ingredients on a packet? Say there's a macaw on one packet and a conya on the other, right? Conya food, macaw food. Check out the ingredients. There is a very, very high chance both are identical, with the only difference being the size of the pellet. Surely you would have thought they would have put a little bit of thought into altering the ingredients for specific species. Now before you write in the comment section saying my avian vet recommended this bag of pellets and said it was amazing for them, Here's something I also very recently learned. The nutrition side of avian vet school isn't actually that prominent. Yeah, they learn how to cut your bird up and do surgeries and all that kind of stuff, but when it comes to what their bodies really need, I mean, no one really knows. That's the thing. I mean, birds haven't actually been pets for that long. So people are still learning. 
But it should be pretty crystal clear that any kind of whole food is always going to be better than anything processed. Now before everyone out there starts freaking out that you've been feeding your bird pellets for all this time, not all are bad. I've heard great things about companies like Tops. They're cold pressed, they use organic ingredients, so all those ingredients they actually put into the pellet keep their nutrients. There may be others out there, I don't know all the pellet brands in the world, but pellets in general aren't terrible. It's just, we as bird owners can just do much, much better than offering our birds the very minimal nutritional requirements. Funnily enough, when pellets actually came out like 30 or so years ago, everyone was super excited. Avian vets, biologists, everyone thought these were actually going to fix so many bird health problems, but they didn't and they actually caused more. I mean, the effects of pellets may not show now. I mean, you could feed a 10 year old child pizza every single day and they're probably gonna be fine for now. 30 years down the line, probably not so much. So with this new dry mix we are offering, it's not just about offering different foods for health reasons. It's so exciting to explore and try new things, different textures, different colors. They are literally mentally stimulated throughout their entire meal. Now our dry mix alone is actually made up of 35 different ingredients. We've included edible flowers, we got herbs, we got a variety of seeds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, flax seed, milk thistle, pumpkin seeds, sesame seed, and a whole bunch of freeze dried products. Now freeze drying something, not dehydrating, actually keep in a minimum of 95% of the nutrition, which is amazing. Again, they'll get around three large tablespoons of the dry mix and one tablespoon of the seed mix. And and you are all gonna learn very, very fast how beneficial seeds can actually be after you tune in to watch the chat I had with Dr. Jason Crean uh, next week or the week after when it comes out. Many people actually say horrible things about seeds because most people start off feeding their birds an entire bowl of sunflower seeds for every single meal. Yeah, that is horrible. But seeds are so nutritious and with a massively diverse diet, they can never eat too much of one thing. Now with our dry mix, I actually think it might be a bit too fruit heavy. I'm gonna post all the ingredients we put in pretty soon. If we did it again, I'd probably make it slightly different. But the birds go nuts for it. Honestly, they love it so much. Every day we bring it out, they're in there. Their heads basically disappear for like 30 minutes straight. It's crazy. It took maybe a couple of days for them to really get into. First they were like, where are my pellets? What is going on? But now their eyes light up and I'm sure they are gonna be so much healthier and so much happier as well. Now I know a lot of you guys, and we also slip up too, by offering our bird human food. You know, have a tiny bit of pizza, have a bite of my burger. Honestly, it's not good. These processed foods that we eat aren't actually good for us, so they're definitely not good for our bird. So let's all just get together and just stop. Our birds will live a happier and healthy life. As you probably know, human food is pretty addictive. Anyway guys, stay tuned for the much longer, fully detailed chat I had with Dr. Jason Crean coming in the next kind of two weeks. Make sure you do subscribe so you do not miss that notification. I'll put a link in the description as well to Avian Raw Whole Food Nutrition, Jason Crean's Facebook page. I'll put a link as well to his website where I did actually watch those two videos. There's a two hour one, there's a 30 minute one. Both are phenomenal. So thanks for watching guys. We're gonna leave you with this super fun cut on exactly how we made our dry mix. This was quite fun to make. Everything we put in ours are right here. But like I said earlier, it might have been a bit too fruit heavy. We're probably going to change it for the next one. Thanks for watching guys and enjoy.